This is Nick from Decker's Pondscape. Today on Tech Tip Tuesday, we are going to explain why we place rocks the way we do and why we shelf back with gravel and then how these rocks complete the ecosystem in these ponds. So I'm gonna go over why we place rocks the way we place them. <clears throat> We're working at a job here. We've got a perfect setting for this. We get a lot of comments from customers on, geez, I see you taking a lot of rocks in, a lot of rocks out. When we place these rocks, we wanna make sure they fit tight together. So gravel, when we backfill with gravel, isn't washing through, and we want them to look like they are in nature. You don't see in nature these big gaps, you know, with big holes and stuff washing through them. So we try to build the same way you'd see it in nature. So let me bring you over here and show you what I mean. So Kyle, who's been rocking this pond, has been doing a great job of meshing these rocks together. What we're talking about meshing together is you try to take you try to take the shape of the rocks and mesh them with the next rock. So in this instance, Kyle has got two flat sections of rocks that mesh together well. And it, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you've got to turn the rock to do it. Sometimes you've got to turn one out to do it. Like in this instance, this rock is just laid flat the way it is. And in order for Kyle to mesh this rock, he had to turn this out in order to get these two seams to meet in a good way. When customers say why we bring in rocks in and out, sometimes we don't have the right rock. It's not, you gotta make sure that everything fits together so it's not washing through, like Jason said. And sometimes we gotta take it out, flip it around, and we can still use the same rock, but it just doesn't fit right, so we gotta adjust it. Now we're gonna go over why we gravel back on these ponds. In this instance, this was an existing pond we're rocking and it was dug like a big bowl, so to say, and it wasn't shelf back. So in this instance, in order for us to keep building, we have to have shelves. So what we're doing is setting rock out farther and then graveling back so we can build up and then keep graveling back and building up. And that'll give us stability for these rocks to not move, to stay in place well. Dick's gonna go over now why why we shelf ponds back when we dig them. Yeah, so when we're gonna, like if, if we were gonna dig our pond ourselves, then we would shelf it. You'd go different elevations, so you can place rocks, you can shape it how you want, and then that way you're not wasting so much gravel. You don't have to do this after the pond is dug. Now we're gonna explain how this rock and gravel helps the ecosystem of the pond. Having that rock and gravel in the pond naturalizes the pond, and it also gives a spot for beneficial bacteria and microorganisms to grow. By doing so, it breaks down fish waste and any unwanted debris that's actually in the pond. And some other reasons we use rock and gravel on our ponds is we don't want our liner to move, so the rock and gravel will weight down the pond so the liner won't move. And the rock and gravel also protects the liner from the sunlight. If you do not have something protecting the liner from the sunlight, the sun just beats down on it and it decreases the life of your pond liner. Also, if you're gonna be interactive with your pond, you want that rock and gravel there. I've been in many a clean outs in the spring on ponds where it's just bare liner. And man, if you get in there and there's a little bit of algae, it can be darn slippery, let me tell you. I've seen guys end up on their butts in the middle of the pond and it's just not, it's not fun. So it really protects you and protects your liner, that rock and gravel. I hope this week on this Tech Tip Tuesday, me and Jason helped you guys out learning about the rock and gravel. If you guys like this sort of thing, make sure to subscribe, like, hit the bell for notifications and comment. Let us know if there's anything specific you'd like to see in a future Tech Tip Tuesday and uh, tune in next week for the next one.